need to get up to TN79 with a group of people and then come back and get the uh, maintenance done on this aircraft. This is my own Cessna Caravan that I purchased in-game. Um, purchased it from a wonderful company called Aardvark uh, Capital. Hoping that it doesn't turn out to be a scam, which I doubt it will be. The person that I bought it from was extremely nice and uh, picked up the aircraft and leased it back to me. They picked it up over in South America, and uh, I'm currently on a lease-to-own plan inside of FS Economy. Uh, this is a older Carinado aircraft, so if you're going to be looking at this, I don't want you to gauge Carinado on this particular aircraft, because this was when X-Plane 11 first came out, and they started to they started to rework some aircraft, upgrade them for X-Plane 11, and over the you know, last few years, they realized that that was not the right way to do it, so they are doing it correctly now, which is doing aircraft bottom up, meaning just creating new aircraft with all the new systems that are in X-Plane. Nonetheless, this is a really nice aircraft, and for Flight Sim Economy, it's kind of one of the staples early on, because... It's a single-engine plane. You don't really have that much to learn about it. It's a PT-6, so it's very easy to work. Once you get a handle of turbines in the game, you, uh, you, you actually can make a lot of money in this aircraft, which is why I leased it. I love the PBR uh, graphics that they have, physically-based rendering, that gives each different part the... The metallic look that it should have so in other words like aluminum steel rubber are all just libraries within it so when they're building this they can just say hey this area over here is steel and then it will make it look like steel no matter what color they put on there PBR gives a much more realistic look to the aircraft and uh, honestly I think that's wonderful but I'm more worried about how they fly and right now I'm using the experimental flight model inside of the game and it is kind of wonky and I'm hoping that it gets fixed a little bit right now we are at if I can get this to work out we are at 5g a4 which is not too far from my house 5g a4 is called air acres I've never been there. I, well, I have. I actually knew somebody that lived there, went there once, and uh, actually was working on their computer long before I got a job with uh, Apple. But uh, it's a nice little strip, and I tried to approximate it when I was building the scenery for this area to what it looked like when I was there, and it was impossible because... You just don't have the right parts with WED, which is the creation tool inside of uh, X-Plane, or one that you download to make the airports. But I have a very close approximation to what the airport really looks like. I even built in the exclusion zone for the, the, the treeless area over here for the approach and departure. Um, if we go in the other direction and look over here, we can see that... It is pretty easy to figure out where it is. Now, I did lay down some green texturing underneath to make it look... Uh, so, I, so I could find it in the ortho photos because I needed to make sure that I had an opportunity to see this thing from the sky, but that's it. And I bought this FBO in the game, and I bought an FBO in Tennessee, and I'll probably buy a third one uh, in Florida and just fly between them for a little bit. Owning your own FBO is uh, quite expensive, um, but if you own a couple of them, you can wind up making a little bit of cash, a little bit of extra cash in the game. But because all of my, uh, both of my FBOs and the third one that I'm looking at right now are all going to be these grass strips, I'm going to be limited to aircraft like the Caravan, like the uh, Otter, the Beaver, and smaller aircraft for just a little bit. Let's get back inside the aircraft and let's do a rough approximation of what a startup sequence inside of this aircraft looks like. It's actually a little bit different than what I'm going to be doing, but we're just going to go through a quick startup because I just want to get into the air and I don't want to keep, I don't want to hold you all up. It's going to be about an hour flight. So there's our fuel pump. Um, 
I'm just going to check our generator, make sure it's tri tripping back. We're going to put on the ignition, hit the startup motor. Everything's going to start moving. We're going to monitor our gauges over here. Let everything come up into the yellow and green. All right, that's good. And then we're going to just add the, you know, push the condition lever forward a little bit until we get ignition. Once we get ignition, we're going to pull back on this to the auto position, turn off the starter motor, and move the fuel pump into the normal position. I hope you didn't just catch that, but I just put the beacon on. I forgot to yell clear prop and put that beacon on. Stu nod, but I'm trying to get into the air real quick. All right, so we're going to put the landing lights on because we're right here on the, on the grass. And I'm going to put all my lights on because I don't want anybody walking up to me. We're going to grab this, which is our avionics. Now, I do have the GTN 750 installed, but the 750 does not have the airport we're going to in it. So we're going to use the 430, which I have upgraded with the Navigraph data set. And we are just going to go to... Let's go to Direct... Um, and it's going to be, I think it's TN79, T, It should be called Oakley. It's another one. It's not as built up as this one. It's actually just a grass strip in the middle of nowhere up there. That's going to be a very, um, very intense landing. We're going to have to fly over the field, see which way the uh, wind is blowing at that time. We're going to have just about 400 feet above the field. We're going to have this layer of clouds here that shouldn't be in Tennessee, but you never know. It is the springtime in the south. And then we're going to do this. All right, so zoom in, zoom out. I think what's going on is that the reality GTN still wants to be the master device. We're going to take that out of there. There we go. I actually wish I could get this one in here, the GN 650. We're just going to go with this 430 for today. Yeah, Reality XP really is impressing me with the uh, products that they're making for this. I just wish there was a way for them to make these real ultra-realistic products and uh, actually use Navigraph data. I mean, it is important that you get the trainer in there because then you get all the features of the device. But, you know, there's a lot to worry about here. We're going to start our flight here. And we've got wind coming right down the pipe here. We can see that down there. There should be another one of those down here. Let's look outside. Nope, I did not add that. We are down in the middle of trees here. So things are going to get a little bit weird. So the first thing that we're going to do is bring that prop all the way forward. Bring our condition lever forward. We're going to give only 15 degrees of flaps. This thing is going to take off very quickly, but we're going to bring our torque up to about a thousand. Oh, we just got a new. There we go, a thousand. And then we're going to smoothly move it forward. And right around 40, we should be pulling our nose back. There we go. Just to get off the runway, I can't hold it up. All right, good. Yeah, we've got a little bit of uh, shaking there because we were just bordering on the stall speed. We're going to let us get some altitude here, probably about 500 feet, and then we're going to drop those flaps. We should be in the soup by then. Yeah, this uh, layer of clouds isn't that high, so we're going to blast through it, and we're going to pull back now, not over torque it again. We probably just set this engine on fire, to be honest. And we're just going to get up here through the clouds. Right, it shouldn't be that high of a ceiling. It's just a really low rainstorm in this area right now. Okay, we've got 
that up. All right, let's make sure all of our lights are off. I really need to get that switch panel from uh, Satek. It would make things a lot easier. I'm still flying with my X-56 and not with the not with the yoke. I haven't moved that over here yet. So my opportunity for success here includes not climbing at 2,000 feet a minute, just keeping it to 1,000 feet a minute. Keeping the aircraft relatively stable and turning onto course now. All right. And as soon as we blast through the clouds and get up to an altitude that I know that we can sustain for a bit, then we'll worry about handing over control to the GPS. I just want to get through these, this cloud layer. I'm happier with this rate of climb. All right. No, 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 no. Updrafts. Oh, God, that was bad. I don't know if you see it. We're hitting some major updrafts. Okay, we're at the top of the cloud layer. That's a 4,000 foot cloud layer. Okay, let's blast through it. We should be fine. There we go. So, we're going to click on the CDI to GPS. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lock this in and click over here and say navigate via the GPS. That's it. Altitude wise, I think we're going to the east, so I want to go 6,500 feet. In reality, this would be a, uh, a IFR flight, so I'm going to set it in here. We're going to arm that. And when it gets up to 6,000 feet, hopefully it stops. If not, I'm ready over here. So nav, I'm ready on the altitude just in case it doesn't stop. No, it's not going to stop. Nope, it's starting. It's coming down. That's good. I'm going to back off on the torque because I just over torqued the hell out of this. So what's going on there is my X-56 has a broken tension spring inside of it. There's a little wheel that you spin on the side and it locks the X-56 throttle in place. When I take my hand off the throttle, which I did, it kind of pulls it forward over time. And if I'm not paying attention, which I wasn't, it's going to creak that needle all the way up. All right, so we've got a nice little flight ahead of us. I'm going to back off to about there. And I'm just going to come off the red line a little bit on the propeller. And it looks like we're going to have ship weather all the way there. It looks like the clouds ahead of us are a little bit higher than they were here. I'm going to take a look at Tennessee weather and hope that it's not any worse than it was when I looked at the beginning of this flight. So I'm opening up Garmin Pilot, and I do not have that for you guys to see right now. All right, Oakley. We've got that on the list. We're going to go to the map. And we're going to look for where we're at. Alright, at this speed we shouldn't be too long getting there. So if we just back out of this one notch, we'll get all the pertinent information. So it says an hour six minutes. I'm just going to push this up just a little bit more so we get a little bit more speed out of it. Maybe we could drop it down to an hour total because I don't have that long to do this. All right, so weather.
it's VFR flight rules where they are right now so this storm is uh, just in this local area over here and this overcast is actually just uh, just overcast itself. There's no rain even falling anywhere nearby. My voice is uh, getting, having a toll on it from this wonderful yellow dust period that Georgia experiences all throughout the beginning of April. And it really is making it hard for me to talk. So sorry about that. All right, so these flights that I've been taking have actually been very, very, very good. We're going to come off a of standby. I screwed that up, too. All for trying to get into the air quick for a YouTube video. Mm. So I have been playing this, uh, well, flying the simulator for quite some time now because I find it's a lot easier for me to do as I wait for my favorite game to get completed, which is, of course, Star Citizen. I've been very frustrated in that game lately because PTUs are meant for testing and the PTU fills up with people and immediately crashes every time I get into it. It's kind of weird. Sometimes I appear inside a habitat and all of a sudden I am in the middle of space. So I've kind of pulled away from Star Citizen just for a little bit until they get a much, much more stable working product which should be within the next week or so and then I'm going to start hammering out a bunch of videos as 3.5 becomes more and more the norm of what Star Citizen is going to be over time. A lot of things in 3.5 that have changed and uh, I can't wait to bring you all of the uh, opinions and uh, commentary that I have on the game. But as far as uh, X-Plane goes, I, I really am a big X-Plane fan and you know, as a real-life pilot, I find it to be a much better representation of real flight than FSX and Prepared are. And I am so happy that companies like uh, like Carinado are coming out with more and more aircraft. Oh, here's one of the updates from three point. I'm sorry, from 10.30 or 3.2, whatever it was. See all the particle effects right here. The engine exhaust. It's pretty cool. Yeah, this has a gas turbine inside of it, a PT-6. Like I said, very easy to fly if you're paying attention. And we got caught with our pants down twice in this flight because we weren't paying attention. Once on the uh, throttle over there, and now everything seems to be working fine. And, of course, once on forgetting our transponder right there. Um, in, all, in reality, we would be... We would be with a squawk code. I mean, that, that would be really what we would have. And every time we're in the game, we have a squawk code given to us by the ATC if you use it. I just find the ATC in the game to be uh, marginal at best right now as they're working through getting the game up and running into this new flight model that they have. But ATC inside of X-Plane is taking a turn for the better. So. There's, there's a lot of phrases and words and numbers and all sorts of things that need to be in the game. And we need lots and lots and lots of different voices to make it more, um, how do you say, to make it more interesting, more diverse, more, um, yeah, more diverse. That way you don't hear the same people talking back and forth all the time. So inside of X-Plane, one of the reasons I love it so much is that it's kind of like a platform. So think of X-Plane as a platform. The platform is created by Laminar Research and that platform gives you a world to fly in and physics that control how you fly. That's pretty much what they give you. And then they give you all the APIs and all the hooks and all the, all the features that you could lock into to make your own aircraft and make your own scenery and make your own everything. So one of the things that they did early on in the game was they, they admitted there's no way they're ever going to be able to make scenery for every single place in the world. 
they just don't have the time for that so they made a web development tool or a world development tool that allowed just anybody to accurately make the well to close to accurately make the airports with 3d buildings and signs and um, other objects on the airport and that was called the scenery gateway and that's how I've gotten quite a number of airports into the game already and I'm about ready to drop a couple more and make some updates to others and I think that's pretty cool because scenery gateway gives the opportunity for the community to help the development team flesh out the world so with ATC the way that I get it from what Austin who is one of the well oh I'm not in the Cessna 172 <laughs> In the Cessna 172, you look down here, there's a little glove box, you open the glove box and there's a little, uh, there's a little bobblehead doll of uh, Austin in there. Anyway, so um, what they were saying in one of their last uh, Q&A sessions is that they're going to have something similar to Scenery Gateway for ATC, where they're going to have lines of um, text that you could read and then upload. and based on the quality that there is, they're going to start implementing it or, or turning it into the game. And that's going to be a way where the community could help start diversifying and improving the ATC system in the game. I think there's a little bit more to it, but that's the very basic elements of it. And I'm very excited about that because it means that we get something that's a little bit, um, a little bit more interesting when you're flying. Because right now, when you use ATC in the game, it's 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 utter. It's not crap. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it this way. It is not crap. But I can't do something as simple as this in ATC and say, um, oh, what are we? We're Cessna Caravan. What is our? I don't know my number. I would say Cessna Caravan November seven eight kilo Lima is at let's see what are we at six thousand feet we are 25 miles northeast of Cobb McCollum field request special VFR clearance into the airport and then you know I can just get special VFR clearance or whatever whatever I want right I could ask for changes in altitude I could ask for changes in in course um, but that's not something that's in theirs right now you have to have a point A and point B and start from point A, go to point B, and the ATC is just going to follow a script where it moves you along and it's not going to be able to change that script. Like uh, if you say you're flying at 8,000 feet and you start flying at 8,000 feet and the, and the ceiling drops to 8,000 feet and you want to drop down to 6,000 feet, you can't ask for a altitude change at this point. That's a little bit... Uh, that's a little bit scary. Even in flight sim, I could be like at... I used to play flight sim all the time. I mean, obviously, I'm a flight simaholic. I'd be practicing in flight sim over off the uh, south practice area, south of ISP, which is um, Islip MacArthur Airport. And uh, I would be able to bring up a menu, look for nearest airport, and then check in with them, and then ask vectors to the request vectors to the active, right? Vectors to the approach. And their ATC was intelligent enough and useful enough to direct me to the final approach. Oh, that's weather being rebuilt. I could just go at like 2x speed, 3x speed. We can do that just to move, move us along a little bit because um, I want you to see all this and I don't want to uh, I don't want to kill it, you know what I mean? I, I don't want to kill the time that we have together. So instead of 55 minutes, we'll be together um, probably about 25 more minutes. Well, that won't be bad. Um, I know that it sounds like I just said we were going to cut the speed by three, but just chill. You'll see what I mean. All right, so... I think ATC has got to be the biggest upgrade to this game because there's so many things that in the game make you feel kind of alone in a, in a huge world. And there are plugins that I can get to make those 
moments of being all alone feel a little bit, a little bit better. And uh, one plugin like Pilot to ATC is kind of promising, but I would like to see it better integrated into the game and not be a plugin. And World Traffic is another really, really good upgrade, which I think should be not upgrade plugin, which I think should be a plugin, because I think that in that situation. Um, there's so many different aircraft that are being built by so many different people that in order to get them all represented in the game in traffic, I think a plug-in like World Traffic is important. That way the community dictates how that works. But when it comes to ATC, I think the... I think that needs to be one of the biggest things that's worked on in the game right now. I love that the particle effects are there and they have better, um, well, they're, they're developing out better systems to entice some of those great aircraft designers like Edway, um, AccuSim products, oh, and Just Flight over to X-Plane, entice them to come here by building in elements of the game. Like before, there wasn't a real system simulation or engine simulation, and now they've got that working. I think that's pretty awesome. But I think as somebody that's in the game a lot and looks at those things as needed, I also think that fixing the flight experience is needed. And although you can do the $20 a month services or the free services like Pilot Edge and VATSIM, sometimes you just don't want to be online. Sometimes you just don't want to talk to people. You just want to be in the game and just hit the buttons and let the computer tell you where to go and what to do. So I, I see that in 2019 is like one of the biggest things I could be working on. Now for me, what I am pretty impressed with right now is that they gave me better tools inside of uh, WED, which is the world editing, uh, let's just say it's the development kit. The world scenery development for airports that they released so I'm pretty excited about that one of the best features in there is going to be it's a full 64-bit program so I can tell you it, it was really slow and would crash sometimes in the past I think that this means that I can have more lines more curves more buildings more objects on the field before it crashes because some airports are very big and some airports are just very densely populated. I made a, I made a really, really, really um, pseudo accurate, well, uh, close to accurate airport um, for MGE, I think it is, Dobbins Air Reserve Base. And somebody came through and deleted a bunch of stuff that I put there, probably because I put so much in that airport it was making people's computers run at a slow speed that's another thing that I think they they should be working on I guess I could put that in the first spot moving to Vulcan so Vulcan and DirectX and why is Vulcan so important and I believe that Vulcan is important for gaming especially in games like this because they span platforms this product works on it works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And because there are people using a product like this on all three, because flight sims are really a uh, niche market, right? Let's go up to uh, let's go up to eight for now. All right, so that didn't work. That will work now, won't it? That should work. So that should bring us up to 8,000 feet. And I believe at that point we should be above this this crud that's starting to uh, infest, infect our uh, flight here. So Vulcan, I'm not even going to pretend that I know what Vulcan is and what it's going to do. All I know is that they're saying it's going to improve performance. and. Uh, put AMD and Intel on an even playing field. For me, that's very important because my backup computer, should this one ever fail, is a, a hyperspeed, <laughs> sorry, 
it, it's a really, 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 really fast six core uh, Mac Mini with an external AMD graphic card. And right now, the game doesn't even recognize external graphic cards. So if I had to use it as a backup, I'd probably have to figure out a way to install Windows on it and use it. But since I have an external graphic card and a T2 chip, I don't know if that's going to actually work. But as soon as they get that fixed and Vulkan implemented, I know that it's going to open up my possibilities of being able to use a second device for flying around in this, you know, flying around in the sim. We're only at 1.6 times because of all the clouds. So I thought we were going to go a lot faster. I thought we were at 6x. We're at 1.6x. That's just horrible. So I guess 1.6x x is a lot better than 1x. So we are going 60% faster. No, we're not. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That would be 60, 70% faster. So underneath us are all these beautiful mountains and terrain that is just gorgeous. And we're up here in the clouds, not able to see any of it. In fact, from the outside, yeah, just other crap around. But it looks like it looks like we might be coming to the end of this uh, layer of clouds. Let's see if I bring up the 750. The 750 should be able to tell us where we are. So if we bring up, let's go to Reality GTN. I love this device, and I just wish it was better implemented. All right, there we go. And then we're going to go to GTN 750, and we're going to just show the window. There we go. And we don't want it to take precedence over that. But we're going to back out just so we could see where we are. All right, so and I'm going to show you because... TN79 doesn't exist in the game. Oh wait, it does. No, nope. see, it doesn't. See? It doesn't exist. And the reason it doesn't exist is because they pretty much in real life took it away. It, it's gone. But in the game, it's an FBO that I purchased, so I had to uh, I had to just place it down. So TN79 is going to be just around one of the rivers over here, so I don't see the rivers being depicted. So it's going to be up on that river over there. It's going to be in this area. There's an airport right on the river with it. That's BNA. Yeah, it's not that far from BNA, which is... Uh, I believe BNA is Nashville. Or is it Memphis? I forget. Yeah, now it's Nashville. Okay. So somewhere on this river is where we're going to. And it just doesn't show up for whatever reason. My guess would be it's probably right by one of these, like by PVE possibly? Let's see where we're heading. Yeah, I think it's by PVE because it's right in a crook like this and there's the ridge lines that it's by yeah i think that's probably right where we're going to so if i say pve that's going to take precedence i don't want to get a little bit more broken layers of clouds in there which means we might be coming through it this doesn't show us weather just yet I don't know how to get it to show weather, but if I go back to the main screen, weather is not implemented. See that? I think it, weather only works in uh, X-Plane. It doesn't work in this. Oh, yep, we're getting closer to VFR area. Look at that beautiful sight down below. That's just hot. Look at that. Love it. I love this game. This, this simulator is amazing for showing off things like that. We're going to make that go away. Just so we know that we're going in the right direction, that's all. With 37 minutes, we're at 2x time now, which is cool. Um, I think we're going to be fine. 
All right, I'm gonna take a look at where we are on the Garmin map. Oh, I should have done this. Yeah, it's right outside Nashville. And I was absolutely wrong. Let's bring that back up again so I could show you where it is. Plug in, let's bring up the Reality GTN 750. And uh, let's just do a direct here. Select Waypoint, and we wanna go to And it will be right off of this one, right, right off of this one right here. So it won't show it, but we're going to fly right through the Nashville air, airspace, which is going to be really horrible. But it's going to be, if I get this right, and it doesn't show it, so we're really looking for... trying to get this right. Yeah, it doesn't show the little mini river that's behind it or the topographical data. So it looks like it's right about here. That's where we're going. All right. It's at 1.3 times. God, we dropped down. I don't usually fly on the time acceleration. I usually just fly realistic flights. That's it. I, I, I just don't see a reason to use it. I can do other things. I could do schoolwork. I could do work for work. I could do a lot. So I, I tend to just fly in real time. And the main reason for that is I, I really just like flying. I <laughs> like being able to see all the scenery that's in the game and I spent all that time creating ortho photos for X-Plane that I feel that it's important for me to experience them. Alright, so it looks like we might be coming up on the edge of this front in a few. Let's see how far we have to go. We should be coming up on part of the area. We are going off course a little bit here. Yeah, we have moved off course, and I think it's because we have the GTN open. Plugins, Reality GTN, let's get rid of it. And that should put us back onto course. This came off. Yeah, we're back on that. And back to nav over here. Well, that should get us back on course. Yeah, it's going to try to intercept that course a little bit tight. I think the autopilot in the game makes two abrupt changes, way too abrupt of a change in your course when trying to make an intercept. It does come in in what looks like a 45 degree angle, which is probably the right way to do it. Maybe a 30 degree. Mm. But it can make that a little bit differently. You don't need to jump back on that so quickly. Unless you do in real life, right? That way you're flying the course that you projected and you're not having people kill themselves trying to fly around you. Alright, so in this area we do have a little bit of turbulence because we're flying over a few mountains and yeah, nice. I like the broken sky. And I think the rendering of clouds is getting a tiny bit better inside of the game. Yeah, I can see why we're at VFR. I could probably drop down to 6,000 feet after we get to the head of this front over here. I think we should be able to. At least at 8,000 feet, I don't have to worry about any of the... Uh, well, I think we blasted through most of the mountains. The mountains around where we are now, 1,800 feet. After we get past that front, we're going to descend. 
we'll probably start moving to normal time at that point. Yeah, it's it's probably breaking the game with us doing this right now. There we go, regular time. And 1.7. 1.8. I just want to get to the end of the front and then we'll drop it down. Let's come off that. Oh, the re reality. Alright, we need to do this. There we go. We have 29 minutes, but we're going at 1.6 to 2.0 time, so we have about 14 minutes left in this flight. And we're going to say it's going to be 22 minutes because we're going to have to... Uh... There we go. Laying in our course correction. How's our fuel doing? Fuel is, wow, well, fuel is perfect. Fuel flow is not that bad. I think we're getting a nice little push from the wind over here. Nope, we're only getting nine knot push. That ain't bad. All right, so our ground speed is 149. Our true airspeed is our calculated airspeed. Hmm. All right, so I think dropping down to 6,000 or even 4,000 feet wouldn't be a bad thing right now. So I'm gonna. I wish you could click this out. So I'm gonna get this going, and I'm going to start dropping down in height or descending. I'm going to pull back on the throttle so we don't blast into the ground. And I'm going to go back to full prop on the descent. I'm going to back off just a tiny bit. Being against that red line, it scares me. We're going to pop down through the clouds a little bit. We are in an IFR flight, but we should find smoother air down below this uh, this layer of clouds, which is a lot higher here than it was back where we were. And that should give us an opportunity to find that airport once we get closer to it. And also run at a uh, full 2x speed. I want my flight director back on. There. That way I know that I'm flying in the right direction. So this airport that we're flying into is utter hell because of the way I made it. Now, in the game, the airport, they put on the top of the mount of a mountain and they flatten that mountain. That was just bad. They should never have done that. Because if you look on a map, whether it be Google Maps, Bing Maps, or Apple Maps, the, the, actual, the actual airport is nowhere to be really pulled out of anything other than right on the side of a road. You can see where they have a uh, grass strip that's etched out and a helicopter landing area, which I believe this airport is probably more for helicopters, even the gyro, um, rot of gyro rotor, whatever it's called. All right. Auto gyro. Sorry. So we're going to go to Oakley Airport. Tennessee. called Oakley something, isn't it? What the hell is it called? Oakley, Nashville, Tennessee. Right, so now I can go to the satellite map. Now I can see where it is. And honestly, yeah, it, it is it is shit. Because I started doing work down 
at the bottom of this road and it looks like the game thought the airport was in a certain place but you can see the people around here probably have the airport on the side of a road here and that's where I built it yep and I can see you cross the road with the airport airplane and I can see where they park it which is pretty weird now because I have uh, in this game I have the ortho photos we should be able to see everything right, we're 23 that means we're 50 miles out flying at 4,000 feet below the overcast I'm pretty happy about that we should be able to get into that airport with no problem and we're still going to be going at this 2.3 2.4 speed because I just want to get this to the end so you can see the pretty amazing landing that I have to perform to get in this this airport and uh, a lot of times I'm I feel like I'm flying uh, I'm flying in the wrong direction because you can make the approach from one direction the other direction it's absolutely impossible but I really do believe that this airport the way that they have it set up was probably for uh, much 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 smaller like ultralights or uh, most likely helicopters I can't see them bringing much you know anything bigger than this in there ever but most of the time I think they would probably be bringing in something like a Cessna or a Piper or a Piper Cub right so you'll see what I mean the, the beauty of this aircraft is its slow flight capabilities are amazing so it's short takeoff and field takeoff and landing capabilities are, are just wonderful so I can try to get it in here I've never tried to make an approach with this one into that airport um, and uh, right on the opposite right, right on the departure or approach you're actually encroaching a little bit in on the uh, airport itself on the other end but you're not coming anywhere close to their uh, yeah, you're not coming anywhere close to their approach or departure. There's another airport right there. And as long as they do right and left traffic, right on, uh, let's see what the runway numbers are here. Right on runway 2 and left on runway 30, uh, 20, you should have no problem. I thought they had two runways for a second. It's kind of weird. All right, so we should have no problem with this. We should be able to land. All right, good. Not a big problem. 17 minutes out, 36 miles. We've got gas. We have booking. I'm going to back off on this just a little bit. And I'm not going to back off. I'm going to try to push it. Push it real good. We're going to peg it. We want to get there as quickly as we can. Look at that. 13 minutes. Look at the time fly by. I, I honestly 100% hate time acceleration. I think it's like a, uh, I think it's a cheat, <laughs> but it gives me an opportunity to show off a flight that I make quite often since I own both these places, but I'm usually doing this on a Cessna 172. Never done it in the caravan yet. Let me see this airport again. That's going to be fun. It's going to be real fun. All right, let's bring up the GTN just so I can see it. 
Oh, this is just going to start it up again. That's all it's going to do. Show it. Plugins. Show window. Why would you go away once I got you open? I need you open. Stay open. Alright, there we go. Let's back off. We are looking for this area right in here. All right. I want you to go away now. I want you to sit down here. And it's going to be much more difficult to make out the uh, make out the area now. We're going like 160. We got 21 miles to go. And. The weather is becoming shit over here too. Wouldn't you know that it was going to be impossible to find anything. Ugh. Alright, so 20 miles out, 19, 7 minutes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say once we get to 5 minutes, I'm going to take acceleration off and drop to about 2,500 feet. that up here. Everything's in the green. We're good. And we're ready for a descent. At 621. Alright. I knew this was happening. I'm going to back off. And we're going to dive below these clouds. And we're going to cut our acceleration right there. We're just diving below the clouds. We can't see in front of us. We are breaking minimums. No. Oh boy, we can't dive below the clouds fast enough. I wonder if these clouds are going to be too high. It said that it was VFR at this airport. Five minutes out. 13 miles. Should be able to grab it in about two or three minutes and see it. And we are just booking right now. I'm going to back off on the uh, throttle or the uh, condition lever. Just not the, no, the torque. I'm going to back off on the torque. It's just shit. Other shit that we're in. I don't know if we're going to be able to see anything to make this landing. Nope, we're going to. All right, we're out of it. Oh, thank God. Thank the Lord and Bass Assault. All right, we should be able to get there, no problem. Oh, damn it. Nav. Out. Heading. Let's get rid of this one. Reality GTN. Let's just get rid of it. We'll go back to the GPS on this. Look at that. It's all the way off to the side. 4.53 miles away. That's what happens when you play with two different uh, GPSs. Alright, cool. Wish that database had it in here, but I guess it's much more accurate than the built-in database right now. Though I'm using the Navigraph database and that seems to be updated well. Alright, we are at 5 miles out. We're at 2,500 feet. I'm going to bring us down to 100 knots. Everything's full. We're on an outer market. Nope, we're trimming. 
100 knots. We're going to keep 100 knots. We're 9 miles out. Okay. 9 miles out. Okay, we could add one layer of flaps soon. The airport elevation just sucks because they're not really giving you the airport elevation here. Um, they're approximating it because they know nothing about it. Because it's a private one. But they think the elevation is um, 400 feet. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think it's not 400 feet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a uh, local airport that's right there. KJ JWN. And I'm going to grab their altimeter, which would be 3016. It's the same that what we, what we left. So it's just actually one higher. Okay. I want to look at it just to make sure. It's actually too much. It's 3018. It's 3016 right there. All right. Seven miles out. And I'm going to say we're going to, since it's 400 feet, I'm going to start descending to pattern altitude. It should be about 1,400 feet, and I'm going to add in some flaps. Um, because we're going to need to keep this baby slow. Because this runway is short. I mean, it's very short. It's going to be coming right off of that river. See the other airport right there? an airport right there. And this airport, we're going to have to turn up towards that airport. And I think it's like intercepting that uh, area right there. I'm going to have my nose on it right there. My crossbar just passed it. And we're going to be going towards, if I could stop this just for one second, just to give you an idea of where we're going. We are going in that direction over there. And the airport is going to be like right on the side of a road that's going to be over there. It's going to be crazy, I'm telling you. It, it, it's going to be an approach that you would have to be a uh, really good pilot to make, better than me. We're going to be going in here and praying to God that we get it. So let's uh, bring up this. There we go. I need to keep that descent coming on. There we go. I think we really just have to point over at that river right there. And let's take a look in that direction right there. See if we could see it. Yeah, it's a toughy one to see. Maybe we should fly towards it so we get a better idea of where it is. I built this thing, and I don't know where it is. That's that's how tiny it is. And it's right off of a road. All right, we're getting low. We're going to be landing. I'd feel better if people saw landing lights so they didn't feel bad about crashing into me. I believe it's right alongside this right here. There should be a road right there. It should be right in that area. Yeah, that's it right there. It's right here. Okay. That's where we're going. We're going right there. So we're going to try to... <coughs> Sorry about that. Inhaled a whole bunch of yellow pollen, I'm sure. All right, we're going to try to get this one down in there. All right, so... We're going to do another notch of flaps just to slow us down keep us flying. Alright, let's get us down. About 2,000 feet. Alright, we're on our... Alright folks, hold on to your hats. This is going to be a doozy. Okay, we are going to come in. 
wood beam. I think we're a little bit too high for this approach. We might do a grow around. There goes our another notch of flaps. And I, th I think we're too high. But we will see. Look at how short that sucker is. And I did everything at 19x here. Um, if you're wondering what that means, it's my ortho photos right around this area. I had to do it in 19x so I could see around. I got to touch up the water stuff in this area though. Alright. So we came in a little bit weird. I might be able to make it on this one. I just don't want to stall out. And we'll be touching the tops of those. Oh wow. And figures. Hey guys, don't matter if I come right through your house. And that's it. And I, I would say that was a great crosswind approach to a shit place to land at. <laughs> let's, go, let's go take a look at that one. Alright, we don't have anything but a runway here. No extra sod on the sides. Oh, come on. Let's go back down to where the huts are. Uh, we got space pilots, enablers, and other people, gamers, on this one. Alright, let's go down to the terminal over here, which is a bunch of uh, trailers. And this is where you have the helicopter pad right in the center. Alright, clean up the airplane. Turn off the lights. Leave the beacon on. Drop the condition lever. I want to go over to this side and just turn around and get ready for takeoff. Look at that crosswind. Every time I come here, that crosswind is just incredibly shit. And that's the takeoff that we're going to have to do in just a few minutes to go back. But I'm not going to keep you with that. Let's take a look at what this was like. So I am going to shut down this aircraft. Thank you for flying. There we go. Bye bye. And we're going to leave everything on just for a second. Well, the things that matter. Alright, so we got everything. I turned everything off. I'm going to leave the beacon on. But everything that can go off is off now. Okay. Except for our avionics, which we will not burn out the battery with. And I thought I turned this off. No, we did. Okay, so let's look at our replay. Our replay shouldn't be so bad. I am interested to see how I, I, I handled this landing. I think this will be good. Let's see if we can get one of these wonderful views. I don't like this view that much. And maybe we will do this one. Let's get rid of you. And let's just pull back a little bit. I'm going to do this a couple of times just to see. I didn't have a crab angle and I was a little bit wide on that and with how much wind we had we should have been pushed further this way I got back in course and oh look at me getting pushed this way that's pretty wild alright let's I'm, I'm I'd be amazed if we actually didn't cut right through one of these things oh no we didn't we came over it and landed Holy cow, I gotta see that from another, I gotta see that from another view. Alright, let's pull it back this way a little bit. I wanna see if we came anywhere close 
to hitting that. So this view should be alright. Oh my god, we are descending rapidly. Alright, this is going to be the last one, so we're going to get rid of this. I'm not going to do a bunch of replays, I just want to see it. And I want to get the whole aircraft in it. There we go. Tail and all. Uh, keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. Oh, look at the flaps. Everything's perfect. I am so interested to see if we clip through this. We'd be coming over all these trees. Wow, we just made it. Well, that was good. That was good. That's why we fly this aircraft. It has amazing short field capabilities. Alright folks, thanks for joining me on this flight. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button below. If you do subscribe, remember to do a wheelie on every taxi. I mean, if you do subscribe, please click the notification icon and you will be, you'll be updated on all my future videos. And with that said, folks, you all be safe out there and I will talk to you soon. Bye.